Good day, grade 7 students. I am Sir Clifford Lutt, and welcome to your MAP 7 subject. And this is your lesson 1. It is all about physical fitness. In this lesson, we will differentiate physical activity from exercise and exercise from physical fitness. First, let's talk about physical activity. Physical activity is defined as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles which results in energy expenditure. So physical activity in daily life can be categorized into occupational, sports, and body conditioning, household chores, or other activities. So physical activity, it means it's making our body active. For example, uh, our body is keep on moving. Uh, for example, naglilinis tayo ng bahay natin, we're helping our mother to uh, clean the house, clean the kitchen, that's considered as physical activity. So, anything we do that our body is keep on actively doing something, it is called physical activity. In this slide, let's talk about exercise. Exercise is defined as subset of physical activity. So when we say subset, it is under the group of physical activity. So exercise is planned, structured, and repetitive. So ito ay planado at nauulit. It should have final or an intermediate objective, and that is to improve and or maintain one's physical fitness level. So for example, si kuya or si ate nyo, ay gusto ma-maintain o gusto magkaroon ng six-pack abs. So, ang kailangan niyang gawin ay mag-exercise. Eh, anong exercise ang dapat niyang gawin? For example, he will do the curls up every day to maintain or to gain some six-pack abs. So, that is we called exercise. Siya ay planado at nauulit. Planned and repetitive. And lastly, let's talk about physical fitness. So, physical fitness is set of health and skill-related fitness components that enable the body to perform daily tasks. Therefore, being physically fit has been defined as the ability to carry out daily tasks without undue fatigue and unforeseen emergencies. So, masasabi na ang isang tao ay physically fit kapag ka hindi siya nakaramdam ng undue fatigue. When we say undue fatigue, hindi siya nagkaroon ng difficulty. For example, Simple walking, naglalakad ka lang and then hindi ka naman mabilis hingalin. Like others, I might say that you are physically fit. Kasi hindi ka nakaramdam ng angiopathic and also unforeseen emergencies. And here, physical fitness is the amount of physical activity and exercise that you do on a regular basis affects your physical fitness. So that is physical fitness. And also, physical fitness has components that are measurable. So when we say measurable, ito ay nasusukat. Each component will tell you your physical strength and weaknesses. So makikita sa physical fitness yung ating strength and weaknesses, kung ano nga ba yung kalakasan natin or kahinaan natin. You may find out that you are physically strong but not flexible or vice versa. So here in physical fitness, malalaman natin na tayo pala ay malakas pero hindi tayo flexible. O may skill tayo na angat sa iba pero may skill din yung iba na angat sila. So And also, you may also discover that even though you look thinner than your classmate, you are heavier than them. Hindi porket mataba siya, ikaw ay payat, ay eh mas mabigat ka na doon sa mapayat kaysa dito sa mataba. So, dito sa physical fitness, malalaman natin yung mga ganong bagay. Physical fitness has its own components and it is divided into two. We have the health-related components and skill-related components. Under health-related components, we will talk about cardiorespiratory endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, body composition, and flexibility. First, let's talk about cardiorespiratory endurance. Cardiorespiratory endurance is the ability of the circulatory and respiratory systems 
to supply enough fuel for the body during and after physical activity that is done for a long period of time. In order to improve cardiorespiratory endurance, you must engage in regular aerobic exercises such as walking, jogging, swimming, and many more. Let's talk about muscular endurance. Muscular endurance is all about the ability of the muscle to exert force repetitively for an extended period of time without being fatigued. Kumbaga itong muscular endurance na susukat kung kaano katatag ang muscle natin doing some exercise na napupersa yung ating muscle. So, you may improve muscular endurance of the arms by doing push-ups for a few minutes without stopping. So, ini-encourage ko kayo na itry sa inyong mga bahay itong pag-push-up and then kung ilan yung magagawa yung push-up ay yun yung hangganan na kaya lang ng muscle niya. Muscular strength. In this slide, let's talk about muscular strength. So, it is the amount of force you can put forth with your muscles. It is often measured by how much weight you can lift. People with strength have fewer problems with back aches and carry out their daily tasks efficiently. So, here are examples of muscular strength include push-ups, weightlifting, heavy weight with pure repetition, and pull-ups. So fitness testing will be measured by doing push-ups. So that is muscular strength. Let's talk about body composition. Body composition is the percentage of body weight that is fat compared to other body tissues such as bone and muscles. People who have high percentage of fat are more likely to be ill and have a higher death rate than lean people. Exercise and eating the right foods in the proper amounts can improve body composition. So take note of that. Body composition can be measured using an instrument called calipers. A special scale or it can be calculated by using the body mass index or BMI, which uses height and weight to determine your BMI. So that is body composition. Lastly, let's talk about flexibility. Flexibility is the ability to use your joints fully. You are flexible when the muscles are long enough and the joints are free enough to allow movement. So example here, those person who can do the bending are considered flexible. People with good flexibility have fewer sore and injured muscles. Stretching before and after activities will help to improve flexibility. So in every exercise, Napakahalaga na magkaroon muna tayo na stretching. So the sit and reach and the trunk lift are two tests used to measure flexibility. So I encourage you all to try the sit and reach and trunk lift in your houses. So that is flexibility. In this slide, let's move on to the skill-related components. So we have agility, speed, Reaction time, coordination, balance, and power. First one, let's talk about agility. Agility is the ability to change and control the direction and position of the body while maintaining a constant rapid motion. So for example, changing direction to hit a tennis ball. And other example for this is changing direction to hit a ping pong ball to those who are playing table tennis. Let's talk about balance. Balance is the ability to control or stabilize the body when a person is standing still or moving. For example, in line in 
skating. Or for example, those person who is doing a bike trick that is considered as balance. In this slide, let's talk about coordination. Coordination is the ability to use the senses together with body parts during movement. For example, dribbling a basketball using hands and eye together is called hand-eye coordination. So that is coordination. Let's talk about power. Power is the ability to move the body parts swiftly while applying the maximum force. Of the muscle, power is a combination of both speed and muscular strength. For example, pullbacks in football must clean their way through a other players and speeding to advance the ball, and volleyball players getting up to the net and lifting their body high into the air. Another example for this is a badminton player who is ready to smash the shuttlecock. So that is an example of power. In this slide, let's talk about reaction time. Reaction time is the ability to reach or respond quickly to what you hear, see, or feel. For example, an athlete quickly coming off the block early in a swimming or track relay or stealing a base in a baseball. So, one of the example here sa reaction time ay sino na dito naka-encounter na hinabol siya ng aso. So, ang katawan natin nag-respond quickly and ang tendency nung tayo ay tumakbo. So, that is reaction time. The last but not the least in skill-related components, let's talk about speed. Speed is the ability to move your body or parts of your body swiftly. So, you say swiftly is in a fast moving position. Many sports rely on speed to gain advantage over your opponent. So, for example, a basketball player making a pass break to perform a layup, a tennis player moving forward to get to a drop shot, and a football player outrunning the defense to receive a pass. So, that is speed. We are now done to the health-related components and skill-related components. Let's move on what is BMI or body mass index is. BMI or body mass index refers to the measurement of one's weight related to one's height. To get BMI is simply divide your weight kilogram by your height meter squared. So here are example of the body mass index computation. For example, you gain 30 kilogram and your height is uh, 1.2 meter squared. So 30 kilogram um, divided by uh, 1.44 meter that is uh, converted na sa square root. So it is equal to 20.83. So that is a normal uh, BMI. So in this slide, you will see the standard here upon getting your BMI. So we have the less than 15 up to greater than 40. So in less than 15, we have the starvation. If you get 15.0 to 18.5, you are underweight. If you get 18.5 to 24.9, you are normal. 25.0 up to 29.9, you are overweight. 30.0 and 40.0, you are obese. And greater than 40, you are morbidly obese. So that is the standard of our BMI. This is the end of our lesson. Thank you and God bless you all. So please send a heart reaction button in our GC to confirm that you've watched our video discussion. Again, thank you and God bless you all grade 7 students.